Let's start with the SDGs first. The way I look at the SDGs is a goals, signposts, um, things that help can help countries, a group of people, societies, uh, communities focus. And also, um, it's a way to put, uh, partly from the standpoint of these development, developed countries or African countries, it's a way to put yourself a center stage, you know, to be looked at, to be evaluated, to be assessed. Mm -hmm. Seeing that you do for yourself, but that also people will do to you or for you somehow. So I think you have to understand what it is to establish metrics, to establish a system that set goals and targets. But you do not change through targets. The targets help you focus. And so uh, to look at the way you know, the, uh, the, the whole framework can help um, deal with environment and poverty and these kind of things. You really have to look to, to understand what it means for transformational processes. You know, how do you transform? How do you move uh, from one state where you are some way under to something that is a system shift? It's not just, you know, reaching a target. The, the type of issue we're facing are transformational. We, we're moving to a new economy. And, but the conditions for doing that uh, are not necessarily, necessarily there. Uh, we don't know which, whether it's going to get to it or not. So somehow, uh, you have to address the climate through a different way of generating wealth, of decoupling emissions from you know, uh, the, you know, productive capacity and growth from emissions. Uh, so th these are the basic conditions. So the SDGs uh, can help us, uh, Goal 8, Goal 9, you know, about structural transformation, focus on countries, on the, the fact that you're not just eliminating poverty, you're changing the framework for producing wealth. And you have to do it in Senegal, in Cameroon, in Bangladesh, in different places, you know, parts of the world. You have to change the framework. And it has to be also linked to regional transformations. You cannot, you know, just transform one country at a time. You have to shift the dynamics of markets within regions. Africa is going to be, you know, it's going to be what one, one, one over five people in the world will be African by the mid, middle of the century. It will be almost twice more more numerous than, than than the Chinese today. So, so what? So you, you know, that's what we we need to look at, and the SDG can help us. Now the environment is key to the direction you want to take. So we have to be able to move from the old paradigm where you oppose the environment and human, human well-being. It just, it just doesn't make sense. You know? We define what we do with the environment and we, the, the type of future economy that we need will be biologically, you know, will be based on, on, on bio, bi biological processes much more than before, you know, on, on different ways of dealing with, you know, energies. So I think this is what, what it is, but to be able to import those things, to integrate them into a, an economy, a system, you need to innovate. To be able to innovate, you need to know how to do it, to combine it. Now, that's, that's how I see it. it. It's a bigger way of looking at it, but at the same time, that's what it means in everyday life. In everyday life, if you want to, you know, um, let's say, you know, transform like African agriculture, you need to do it through fertilizing. You need to fertilize. So what kind of fertilizer? You need biofertilizers. You know? So you need to package those, those biofertilizers, microorganisms, or you, know, you need to package them in ways where they can be scaled up and, 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 and just you know, fill the gap, which is enormous uh, uh, in terms of productivity for Africa, for African farmers. You know? Most of them are small scale. I think there are several challenges. I think, the, to me, the main challenge is, is the mental models and the structures of the nature of our world economy, which is extremely unbalanced. And, and the paradigm is, you know, is profit, um, which is good, but at a certain level, it prevents from changing. Okay? So, the mental model is a way of looking at the world, looking at cooperation, you know, um, it's established that what we're in a competitive world, everybody's competing. 
So there is a disconnect between the language of cooperation, which is the language of the development world, which is the way we discuss among ourselves, people in the development, in UNDP, in, you know, in NGOs, in everywhere, in governments, talking about cooperation and aid. It's a language of getting together, of doing things together, of partnership. You know. uh, but in the real world, the, the thing that have a lot of influence, I think that are based on competition, advantages, placing yourself, strategy, you know, strategic thinking, you know, uh, selfishness with guile, I say Williamson, you know. So that's so there's a there's a disconnect and we're all living it and our own individual lives in government, in professions, we are kind of you know, between the two. And it's very difficult to change. Because it's been there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So how can we redistribute the way of producing wealth? You look at migration issues, at the way they're coming out, people dying in the seas and you know, and, and the, the, the conflict that you see is so obvious that that you know people don't do the right thing but they're scared of doing it because it changes changes their life. They're afraid of what's going to do to them. You know, so I think to me that's a key thing. Uh, of course, you have more concrete challenges, policies, things that are heavy, you know, money. You, know. uh, you see, a lot of the money they're talking about the climate, climate money, you know, green climate funds, all these things. It's so much money that you're talking about, but how are you going to use it? How are people who used to get a lot of money from aid going to disempower themselves from getting so much in order for others to, you know, to be able to invest? in things that can make a difference. Not just recycling, you know, getting things, you know, uh, old stuff with new clothes. Uh, so i looking at this type of challenges because on, in human terms, that's where you make a difference. That's where you can help a system change by, you know, um, evolving a little bit in the way you behave in competitive things, that behaviors that we have. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you have a lot of very concrete things that are harder. There are wars, you know, yeah. so it's, uh, it's 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 wider than that. Yeah. I think also another thing that is more directly connected to my experience is that you know the the way we need to we can you know transform the big global discourse into actual things that are happening on the ground. So. To do that also you need to have an understanding of policies. You know, how do you have local policies that can not just reflect but interact with you know, uh, high level policies, national, regional, global, in ways that um, you know, really produce a new uh, thing, things that are different, not just increment, incremental somehow but at some point that can help no, this shit that I've, I've been talking about. My organization, the African Model Forest Network, um, is, is a Pan-African network. So we're working to connect because we believe that change happens through networks, community of practice, and then emergence. And that, that that's, you know, it's, it's through practice concretely. We're coming, our history is science, we're coming from a, you know, background on scientific background, but fundamentally, we're trying to change things through action. And the model for us is um, is a misnomer. It's it's a you know landscape scale conventions that bring people together, and that through that governance platform establish very long term vision and objectives that people can follow through projects, you know, social businesses, value chain development but all based on an identity, where, where are we going, how are we connecting to our government's you know, strategies, uh, regional African strategies, uh, what we call about green growth, inclusive you know, um, change, and this kind of, 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 of thing that are happening in the continent, but that are not really and always transformed, implemented. So I think the, 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 our focus is really to help our societies implement their vision and their objective in a way that is innovative, that is new, that is capable of inventing, bringing solution, real difference. You know, so instead of dealing with natural resources or governance, what we call the, what we call the governance of meetings, we organize meetings. That's how that's how history 
but we call it governance of meetings because we, we don't change the world through meetings. Meetings are just a way to help you get there. So what must dominate in our view of things is how we, as we create a new reality in the economy. We, are that we realize that the key to governance in Africa is really economic governance. It's how you establish new types of economic you know, uh, access of economic opportunities that can uh, change the relationship, that create transparency, that create equity, that create, you know, all these things and, and instead of just discussing the rights of people to have things, uh, you know, to have access, you need to push for the capacity to transform the environment, which is not just right-based, which is also knowledge-based, which is an ability, which is a capability. So you look at things in a very concrete way, you know, and then you relate it to strategy and theory so that it can fit back into the change process. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, we young, we, we were born about five years ago, and, but we, we have demand from 20 countries, um, requests. We have, uh, uh, we establish firmly in five countries in South, Central Africa and also moving in other places. And, uh, they are, you know, autonomous organization spread out with platform women, very, very powerful women group, the indigenous people in Central Africa, very involved, and all of them linked through that platform. Uh, people have a board, everybody's, all groups are represented, and also they have a program for changing the environment.